Hello, everybody. So um, this week, before I get into the topic, I uh, just want to cover a couple of things. First, my Odyssey channel, if you would, please, so kindly, follow me on Odyssey. Link is in the description. There are no ads on Odyssey, which I think is fantastic. I don't like ads, so that's why I've demonetized my channel. Also, um, because, um, gosh, speaking of monetization and support, um, if you would also um, consider buying me a coffee at reinstallpaul.com, um, the link is also in the description, you can go and support my work. Um, no ads or any uh, stuff like that. It's just you supporting the creator um, and me uh, wildly churning out content for you. So I haven't done any analysis videos for a while. I just want to touch on that because I said this a little bit earlier in the year. I am working on a book and I'm doing the first revision now. So the book is, the first draft is written and now it's being revised. And I'm hoping to have uh, something to announce by the end of the year. So stay tuned for that because I'm going to need a little bit of help with that. So that is the other thing. Uh, one more um, housekeeping detail real quick. I would like to ask someone in my audience, if you know a thing or two about SEO, please get a hold of me because I obviously don't. Um, my SEO is just, it's non-existent. It's, it's terrible. Um, definitely not my strong suit and I realize I need help and I am the type of person who has a lot of difficulty asking for help. So this is not easy for me to do. So if that is something that you are good at, something that you do, please reach out to me and we will talk about that. Okay. Um, so this week, uh, following on from last week's video, reality and awareness, are they the same thing? And, you know, I got a lot of good comments, a lot of insights from you guys, which is really great. Um, always helpful to kind of have this like back and forth, right? And let me just go through a couple of these comments. I may not show these on the screen, but I'm just reading them here in real time. Um, there are, there's this idea, I think that, um, everything is consciousness, right? Um, you can, you can find that like in the Kybalion, it says all is mind, right? And that of course comes from Vedic philosophy. Um, there are, um, many instances in, in different spiritual traditions where the thought is that the all-encompassing nature of reality is a mental exercise or it's consciousness, it's awareness, right? And the more I think about this and the more I kind of look for examples of this in the world within myself, um, the more I just keep coming back to this idea that reality, uh, really the, the fundamental nature of reality is awareness. It's, it's conscious awareness. And I just can't, I mean... And I've explored so many different ideas over the years. And I keep coming back to this, this notion that everything is conscious awareness. And I can't, um, you know, I'm not of the, uh, of the school that thinks, you know, I'm not from the uh, reductionist, you know, hard scientific uh, thinking that consciousness is kind of a uh, ancillary effect or just a kind of a something that arose out of whatever physical reality this is. That makes no sense to me because even when we consider something like, you know, the um, research done at the um, CERN Institute at the Large Hadron Collider, um, you know, the premise, the whole premise of for that thing to even exist is that, okay, we're going to break these small particles, these atoms, we're going to break, you know, these, these things that are small, these bosons and <laughs> all of these particles, we're going to make them, we're going to keep smashing them and sm we're going to collide them faster and faster and smash them till we find the, the, the single thing, the, the thing, the single small little physical thing that makes up the physical reality. But that premise 
um, of course, got turned on its ear with the discovery of the Higgs field, the Higgs boson, you want to call it the God particle, whatever. But it's a field, and it's a, it brings us back to this integral view that everything's actually part of a field. And we already know from quantum physics that, you know, what is it, 99% of roughly of everything that's perceived as physical is empty space, right? And so we have this wild paradox on the quantum level. Everything is this sort of um, field interacting, you know, and you have quantum entanglement, right, where, where you have particles when I, you know, particles in, in air quotes, because that isn't really, it's not, they're not really particles, you know, but you have this quantum entanglement thing where you have two supposed particles far apart from each other um, reacting in the in exactly the same instant when one is affected, the other's affected sort of thing. And then you think, well, is what's going on there? And really, this all kind of leads back to this field of awareness or this this um, sense that reality has this sort of mental element. We could, I, I would just call it, just generally, I just refer to it as like a spiritual uh, sort of thing where the essence of reality um, is not with sense experience it's not with perceiving forces as a physical object but instead it's perceiving itself and having ex you know having an awareness then leads to this sense of experience this sense world um the um you know the whole thing about having an experience and having a perception comes from that awareness and then of course awareness up and down the chain has all of these different levels from the most basic uh, thing that just retains its shape in some way or when acted upon in the physical laws it does a reaction according to the physical laws at a very basic level but that's still a level of awareness right so that's key that, that's just what I keep coming back to is that reality and awareness are inseparable and i think the more that and and here's the here's the key thing i think for for this week the more that i look for the overlap how these things not just fit together but how they feed in and out of each other okay um instead of looking instead of looking at things as as a collection of parts well, you've got this, and then you got this, and then you got this, and then you got this. Instead of considering them separately, I'm trying to conceptualize these things that once were separate as something that is both something that things that are both distinct but also integral. Because it seems to me like the fundamental nature of of our reality and the way it can operate is through this paradoxical paradoxical relationship of of contradictions of self and other right where two things where it sounds completely contradictory to the rational mind but i think the key thing is that when we try to understand something when we okay when we try to like point at it define it and say this is what it is as soon as the words leave our mouth, we're incorrect. Even if even if we have a notion that that is correct, and I'm not I'm not talking about language being, you know, pointing to reality, but it's not exactly reality. I'm not I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is I'm talking about reality as a process, because, you know, to understand something means that you have to define you no, know, or I should say to to define something means that. It must be fixed. It must not be a moving target, in other words, right? It must not be something that is continuing to take different shapes and move and 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 that sort of thing. But it has to be fixed so that it will stand still long enough for us to define it. But of course, in science, in really anything, as soon as we put 
pen to paper, the definition is wrong as soon as the ink is dry. Why? Because reality is a process and a process is always continuing, never finished. And that's the key. So reality is never finished. And everything in the manifest world, whether it's an object or a person or whatever, um, is never quite finished. It's impermanent, in other words, right? In in the Buddhist sense. So what we're dealing with is what we're dealing with is a process that's effectively, as far as we're concerned, as far as our small brains can conceive, we're dealing with a process that has no beginning and no end effectively. And so if we treat it that way, we treat it as an integral um, something that makes everything and yet is the one thing, then what I'm saying is if we think of ourselves as a process, process, if we think of every object as part of the same process where it comes into being, it exists for a time in a certain shape or manner, it changes, it goes out of being, right? That's a process. Well, the process is never finished. So that so then if you try to really ultimately define, which can't be done, but if you try to ultimately define, you know, what life is, do we live in a simulation? Do we, you know, for example, um, did God make everything? How did that work? No matter what sort of um, metaphysics or explanation, right? Any sort of existential kind of, uh, declaration we make, we're wrong because reality is a process that's not yet finished. Because if it's not yet finished, then it can't be defined. Does that make sense? So the more I think about reality as a process, the more I start to think of myself and other people and everything as a process. And that's that's a really integral way to see the world, I think. And the more I kind of practice and exercise this sort of... Um, thinking not in fixed terms, not in everything is, you know, because language can be fixed. There's fixed rules of language. There are, you know, when we conceptualize or idolize something in the mind and idolize meaning creating an imago, an image, it's a fixed thing. And, and, and we have to be very careful because if we're, if we're thinking of something as being a fixed thing and we're, um, we ourselves can turn to stone in that sense, right? We can be fixed. You don't want to be fixed because you are a process. Don't fix yourself or what I I mean to say is don't fixate or be fixed upon something that is a process because you're living in a process. You are the process, if that makes sense. So if you are the process in this reality that is has no beginning no end it doesn't really matter and and and, as a matter of fact it doesn't it doesn't matter if god exists or doesn't exist as a matter of fact it's irrelevant to even you know have some fixed pronouncement god exists god does not exist both are both do you know uh they they don't help you at all in the process of life in the sense that you know, knowing that you're a process and you're part of something that's effectively has no beginning and no end, that's very interesting because then you start to see the world in an integral way instead of a separated way. And when you look at the world in an integral way, everything starts to take on a different shape. And at least to me, this is my experience. I know this is highly esoteric. Um, I know this... um, might sound like a lot of new age bum fluffery, right? I assure you, it's certainly not, at least not to me, to some people, but I don't care. But if you start to treat, if you start to th- just think about that in t- uh, that sort of integral view of everything as a process and being one thing, one process expressed in millions and millions of different ways, then I think things start to make more sense as far as like this idea of reality and awareness being the same thing. Then um, if we're thinking in an integral way, it's not so simplistic as to say, well, everything's one thing. That doesn't make any sense, right? It's, it's, it's not that at all. 
but everything is a process and a process can be um a process can be a contradiction a process can be something one t- at, at at one point in time a process can be this and another point of time a process can be something different okay so if you think about it in those terms the contradictions start to sort of be a little more reconciled if that makes sense and i think that that at least for me makes a lot of sense so let me know what your thoughts are i'm interested because this one's going to be um at least in my mind is going to be quite a um quite an esoteric one but let me know what you think